Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So awesome to see so many new faces in here. It's been a while. Welcome. Welcome. My name is Lynn Barnett. I'm a licensed Unity teacher. This has been my church home for 10 years coming up in August. Yeah. And I'm a licensed clinical therapist in the area as well. So welcome and I'm so glad to be here. And I'm so glad spring is finally coming. Yeah. Finally coming. <laughs> The planet is breathing life into our springtime, finally. I did some yard work yesterday and cleared out all the old leaves and could see just the beginning of a few green buds here and there. My tulips are coming up. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I had a friend um, from one of those warmer states we don't like to acknowledge six months out of here. <laughs> come and visit during our polar vortex where it was like 20 below for three days in a row. And he said, you know, where I come from, the sun has two jobs. It lights up the sky and it heats the air. <laughs> Here, I walk outside and I'm like, somebody forgot to flip a switch. It's only doing one of its job. And I'm like, thank you. I've never thought of it that way. Thank you for making it worse than it already <laughs> And the sun's like, I don't know, man, it's the earth. It just tilts the wrong way. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm as hot as ever, y'all just can't feel it. And I think there's a lesson in there for us somewhere, right? That, that light, that breath of life is always there, it's always flowing, and it's our job to be tilting the right way so that we're receiving it. Before my family and I moved here, we lived in Michigan. And there's a thing in Michigan called the Michigan Left. Has anybody ever driven around Michigan and learned about the Michigan Left? It is so annoying. <laughs> it's so annoying. So in Michigan, in order to turn left on some of the busier streets, you have to you have to pass the street you want to turn on, do a U-turn, get over into the other lane, and turn right. Why? Why? Why is that a thing? So I asked somebody when I lived there, and they said, "Well, they you know somebody did a study, and." They said it, you know, on those busier streets, it helps traffic flow because there's not a backup of cars trying to turn left. There's this flow, so these people who's, who are turning left get to just keep going around the big median, and then they can turn right, even though they have to spend time and, and cut people off getting to the other side. <coughs> Nobody asked me about this. So. <laughs> so every time I had to do it for a couple of years while I lived there, I would complain about it in my head, or loud if somebody was in the car, or loud sometimes if somebody wasn't in the car. <laughs> like, why do I have to do this? I just want to turn left. It would be just so easy to go right over there. And I would complain about it, and complain about it, and complain about it. And finally, one day, this little voice in my head said, Lynn, it's not going to change. I'm like, oh, you're right. So, I had to either realize that I was complaining for nothing and wasting a lot of energy and mind space, or I could just go, okay, whatever, somebody thinks this is a good idea and it's not going to change, so I can just deal with it. And I didn't complain about it again after that. In fact, I, there were a few times when I would actually kind of chuckle as I was turning it around, remembering <laughs> all of the complaining I used to do in my head about it. And sometimes we just have to do that. We just have to say, okay, there are some things I have no control over, but this is my life, and I have to embrace it. And I, I am the only one who can breathe life into my life. I am the only one who can breathe life into my life. Together, I am, I am the only, only one who can, can breathe, breathe life, life into, into my, my life. life. I am the only one. You are the only one who can breathe life into your life. And what do we do instead? We try to we try to want somebody else to do it. We try to, well, if only I had this in place. If only I had the right job or the right car or the right relationship or the right kid or the right pet or the right whatever, then I will feel alive. But we're already alive, right? So it's our job to feel that aliveness. So the question to ask yourself, if you're not feeling that life in your life, is what do I need to do to bring that life into my life? What do I need to 
to do. And there are activities that we can do that help us, that feed us, that nurture us. One of them is meditation. It's the best one and it's the most resisted one. I don't know what it is about sitting still, but none of us really like to do that very much. And I hear some people say, I do, so good for you, good for you. I usually tell people, five minutes, take five minutes every day to sit and just watch what's happening on the inside. Feel your body, feel your breath, focus on your breath for five minutes and feel it. Feel it, feel it, moving in and out and give your mind something else to think about besides the 15 things on your to-do list, three of which are not going to get done at least today. Breathe, feel that breath, give your brain a break. And I want you to do something with me right now. I want you to put your attention on your feet. Whether you have your legs crossed or flat on the floor, it doesn't matter. Feel the foot that's on the floor. Just put your attention there. And notice as, as you keep your attention, just focusing on your foot, you can feel more acutely the connection the physical connection of your foot on the floor. And there's a shoe in between, and you can feel that shoe. Hopefully it's a comfortable one, but if it's not, you're gonna feel that more acutely too when you pay attention to it. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> so, just notice that foot and, and how maybe it feels warmer as you pay attention to it. It's because the blood flow is moving down there. The, our blood flows sometimes based on where our attention, I mean, obviously it's doing its job all the time, right? But, but it can be more intense when we put our focus on a part of our body. Just so maybe your foot's warming up a little bit. And then notice your thoughts. You weren't thinking about anything but your foot, were you? And try to think about your foot and then think about something else at the same time. But don't take your attention away from your foot. Keep your attention on your foot and try to think about something else. But really be present with that foot on the floor, that connection and that heat, and try to think about something else. It's really hard, isn't it? It's really hard because we are terrible multitaskers. This has been proven over and over again. Terrible multitaskers. <coughs> so you can take your attention away from your foot now. But to see that, that we have so much power and control of what's happening on the inside that we can take that to-do list and forget about it if we're just thinking about our foot. Somebody uh, shared with me about a study that was done um, that, that somebody had shared with them and had them actually write it out. So the first part of the exercise is to write, I am a terrible multitasker. <laughs> And the second step was to write the numbers 1 through 25 all in a row. And they said, okay, now go down on your paper and now write I, and then the number 1, and then A, and then the number 2, and then M, and then number 3, and then the A, and then number 4, and go back and forth one letter and one number at a time. And, oh, and, and they had to time themselves too, so they timed themselves about writing out the I am a terrible multitasker and then 1 through 25 and then they timed themselves going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it took three times as long to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it was just to focus on the one thing at a time and write it out. Not surprising, but how many of us are working on a project and we check our phones and we check our email and we do this and we do that and we do all these other things, we're not present with any one of them, it takes twice as long. So just from a practical level, it's really a good idea to be present. That's kind of what everybody's talking about. Oh, be present, be in the moment. But do we really know what that means in practice? Do we really, know, do we really practice it? But we know it's important. We know it's important to be present, to be aware, to be conscious of what we're doing and where we're at, but do we actually do that? Or are we going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? splitting our energy and splitting our attention and not breathing life into anything but just trying to get things done. 
so that we can relax at the end of the day and then just to start over tomorrow. You know, the purpose of us being here on this planet, in these bodies, with the souls that we have, is to be more present and be more conscious. That's what consciousness is, is being more aware, being more present, not just being awake versus being physically asleep. So part of what our job is, is to understand I have the control. I have the power to be present with what I'm doing and access the infinite intelligence of the universe. Because we do that through our intuition. And our intuition is that part of us that is so acutely aware. It's like the sun. Our intuition is like the sun that is always there, always willing to help us but we're either tilted toward it or we're not. So taking a moment to just touch in with ourselves, taking our meditation time a little bit every day helps us to hone in, hone that skill of being in the present moment enough that we are open to our intuition when we need it, when we call on it, when we pray for it, when we ask for it even if it doesn't tell us what we want to hear all the time. We are, we are there with it. What kinds of things, activities, help you be more aware of that life flowing through you? One of the things that I love since I was a little kid is riding bikes. My family used to go on bike rides all the time, and we'd always stop at Dairy Creek, which is probably why I love it so much. I was trained, I was brainwashed into loving bike rides because of Dairy Creek. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a teenager, that was one of my favorite activities. I would ride around everywhere. We, I lived on this really hilly, um, in this really hilly neighborhood, and I'd go up and down the hills. I don't think I could do that today, but it was awesome when I was a teenager. So much fun. I'd go fast, and I'd, I could ride my bike with, you know, just sitting with no hands, and oh, so much fun. 25 years ago, I bought the bike that I have today, and I love it. I love it. As a tall person, I had to kind of do some research, because 25 years ago, there weren't a lot of women's bikes for tall women. So I had a special order, this man's bike, and you know, now they don't really care about that kind of thing, right? But back then it was a big deal. And, and I would go riding, I lived in Florida at the time, I would ride up and down the, the, the ocean way, and it was so beautiful, it was so much fun. And I um, went out yesterday, a friend of mine, I called over and I talked to you earlier, like, like, it's supposed to be nice out on Saturday, let's go for a bike ride. So I did my, garden work. And then he came over, and it was time for the bike ride. I'm like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I've been gardening all day. Maybe if we just go to Jewel Osco and back, and I'll get my little tag for my yard waste bag, and, you know, and, and then we can call it a day. Well, okay, if that's what you're going to do. No, I didn't say we were going to go on a bike ride. Well, there's this trail out near a lake. It's not very scenic. It's out along a bunch of power lines and an industrial area. And I don't know. I don't know if I really feel like doing that. And all the while, he's like getting his bike out. He's pumping the tires. He's checking everything. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> so I'm like, but you leave because I obviously, I am not in with both feet on this, yeah. <laughs> so he picked a, this trail and we went to, uh, we ended up going to Buffalo Creek Trail in Buffalo Grove, not too far from my house, and it was so much fun. And if, and if you live up there, you know it's off limits right now, right? It's got big signs that like, do not pass, right? And so I have a picture of myself, I post it on Facebook going, there's the sign, do not pass. That's where I'm going. <laughs> so we, we drove around, not drove, we rode our bikes around there, rode through the mud. Our bikes are filthy. They're so muddy right now. And of course, the hoses are off because winter. And so they're still muddy. 
But it was so much fun. We climbed on construction equipment and all sorts of fun, rule-breaking kind of stuff. It was great. And we got home and I felt so re-energized. Like, that was so fun. I haven't ridden my bike since October. That was so fun. That was so awesome. I'm kind of a wimpy bike rider. I don't do those winter bike rides like some of those people out there. <laughs> no, no, no. But I felt so good. I was so happy that we ended up doing that. And I was thinking about that. And if I had let my head do my thinking for me, I never would have gone. I would have gotten my car, went to Jewel Osco, bought my yard, <laughs> yard bag tags, and called it a day. And would have talked myself out of, oh gosh, I, I worked really hard today in the gardens, and I don't really, you know, I, I did my exercise all day. <laughs> and how often do we do that? We talk ourselves out of breathing life into our life, doing something, stepping outside of what are the little puny chatter in our heads is saying to us and being in charge of what we're really going to do. You know, if I had if I'd had the energy for it, what I should have said to myself and what I could have said to myself is, I know I don't really want to do this right now and that's okay, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. It's okay if I don't want to. I'm going to do it anyway because I know it's right. I know it's the right thing to do today. It's okay if I don't want to. I'm going to do it anyway. Let's say that aloud together. We need to practice that together. I know no, I don't, don't want, want to. to. It's, okay. it's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. It's okay if I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. It's okay if I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. I think we should all practice that in our cars. <laughs> like saying it out loud. It's okay if I don't want to, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and if we practice that enough, it's going to be a lot easier to say next time we need it, right? It's okay if I don't want to, I'm going to do it anyway. You know another, another way we can encourage ourselves to breathe life into life? We've got meditation, we've got doing it when we don't want to is setting an intention in the day. In the morning when you get up, set an intention for your day. There's daily word. You can open to that daily word for the day and just say, okay, how, how is this daily word going to bless me today? I'm going to watch for it. I'm going to watch for how this daily word can bless me today. I like using a book called Spiritual Power Tools for Support for Your Soul where I'll have my meditation time and then I'll open it to whatever page I randomly open it to and I know that's a message for me for the day. And then at the end of the day I check back in and I say, okay, how did, how did I use that today? Or how was that important to me today? And you can use any spiritual book to do that with and it just helps set an intention because what we want to do is we want to be open and we want to be aware of what, how am I going to learn today? How am I going to grow today? And sometimes we need a little backup on that. And that's okay, but just having that intention of, I know I'm going to, to learn something new about myself today, opens us up. We walk around with an open-minded awareness, rather than, I have to get through my to-do list, and I may try to do five of them at the same time. Which is what a lot of us do, right? I'm guilty. And then checking in throughout the day. I usually tell people five times, Got five minute meditation, check in with yourself five times during the day. Where are my thoughts at right now? How's my breathing? Am I breathing at all? How's my breath? Is it shallow? Let me just take a few moments to focus on my breath. Now I can pivot and go back to what I was doing, but I'm more mindful and more present than I was before I checked in with myself. And all those little micro-tweaks that we do over time builds and builds and builds that presence, builds and builds and builds that tuning into our intuition and that, that, that life that is right with us all the time, giving us everything we need as we pay attention to it, just like the, the earth has been slowly tilting back towards the sun. 
so that we feel that warmth and we feel the, both of the jobs of the sun. <laughs> Set your intention. You are the only one who can breathe life into your life. <clears throat> you are the only one who can breathe, breathe life into your life. Do one thing every day. Step outside of what your brain is telling you you want or don't want to do, or you can or can't do. Don't always disobey the uh, don't pass signs, by the way. Huh? Disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is on video. <laughs> do one thing every day to stretch outside of yourself. Something that will nurture you and help you feel that connection right here, right here. So let's tune into that mind, heart, body, soul, alignment, connection, life. I breathe life into my life. I breathe life into my life. I breathe life into my life. There are so many things in our world that aren't in our control. But this vehicle, our bodies, our hearts, our minds, we do have lots of control over. We are empowered to manage where our attention goes. We are empowered to have that support in waking up a little bit more each day. Because waking up a little bit more each day makes a huge difference to the love in our planet. A huge, huge difference. And we say thank you, God, for all the support we receive as we do our part in waking up and breathing life into our lives. Thank you, God. 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 Amen. We are open to receive that breath of life breath of life that we breathe. And as you take a deep breath in, feeling that life move in and through your lungs, throughout your body, all around you. Feel that energy, that upliftment. And when you breathe out, letting it flow freely. Breathe in, life. Breathe out, life. Breathe in, love. And let it flow as you breathe out. Life is all around us all the time. We are the workers with that energy, with that light. We are the hands of the light of God. We are the feet of the light of God. We are the hearts and the mouths and the minds of God. We are connected to infinite wisdom, infinite love, infinite courage, strength, compassion. And we breathe all that in for ourselves and we let it flow. We breathe all that in for 
those around us, with those around us. And we breathe out and we let it flow. We breathe that life in for humanity. of the life and light that flow through us. We are the stewards of that infinite wisdom, infinite life. And right now we just take this time to let it consciously be with us, flow through us. It's flowing all the time, all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. 